when he realizes, oh, the process started with me. And so if I change, then you can change the circle, right? So now you show up differently. You begin to be different. She receives something different. It's not going to happen overnight. So it, you know, it's not, it's not that easy. She doesn't going to, she's not going to trust it and lean into it first. But when you're consistently sending a different program, right? Then eventually she's like, oh, I receive something different. So then something different comes out of her mouth, appreciation, love, sex, respect. He receives something different. And now you have a cycle that works. Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of the TPM show. I am here with one of my favorite people in the world, the amazing Ryan Deadpool Peach. <laughs> and Ryan is not only has Ryan been through the activation method for self, he's been to an alpha reset uh, first as a client. And then he jumped on board to our team, and now he is one of our senior advisors. So if you guys decide, hey, I'm just curious about the activation method, I want to know a little bit more about it, Ryan could be one of the men that you end up getting on the phone call with uh, just to see where you're at. And Ryan's uh, job and his mission in life is to help men, so that's what he does currently. So Ryan, thanks for being here, buddy. But thank you for having me. Stoked. Yeah, I'm excited to have you here. We're lucky to have you here because we have an alpha reset that just went on, um, 13 amazing men going through that process and you volunteered to be one of the guides for them to, uh, to help in their journey. Yeah, it was such a beautiful experience to go through, uh, to see guys come in with all their stories, right, of yeah. why they are where they are and being able to walk through the fire, through through all of it, and to step into the most powerful version of themselves. Yeah, it's, it's cool. Those guys are on fire right now. I yeah. walked over into the house, <laughs> and they are on fire. It's like seeing 13 men who have been, have been you know, plugged out of the matrix, if you will. Yeah. And they are tuned in, turned on the yeah. ready to roll. And it's amazing to watch the shift, right? Like when that, when it hits, yeah. right, the, the story ends and they step into reality, then it, it's this whole world shift for them. And then they begin to make these intentional decisions based on who they really want to be versus the story they've been telling themselves. Yeah. And what which dives right into the topic I want to talk about today, we were talking about this off camera. Um, and since you're, you talk to thousands of men, and guys that inquire about the program, they're not in a great place. When I say they're not in a great place, it's usually their marriage isn't in a great place or they just feel stuck and unsure. And so you talk to probably more businessmen than almost anybody that I know on a daily basis. And you were saying like one of the things that comes up frequently are, is the fact that men sometimes don't think they should be doing the work. They, sh they shouldn't do the work because their wife's not doing the work or because there's been an emotional affair, a physical affair, um, the moon's in retrograde. I don't know. There's all yeah. kinds of excuses why they're not doing the work. Yeah. Tell me a little bit more about that. Yeah, it, it's common, right? Um, men, especially the businessmen, right? They're, they're high achievers. They work hard. They, they plow ahead into things. And so what tends to happen is right now, when we first got married, man, we were bootstrapping it and we were together and we were working hard. And I dove into the business or into my career and have sacrificed right, and sacrificed and sacrificed. And now I've sacrificed all of this and there's been issues, right? Things have come up and I want to address them and she doesn't, mm. right? Um, and so I want to fix it and she doesn't. Got or it. I've done two years of counseling or work, whatever it is, and she's not willing to do anything. And so it gets projected onto her that when she begins to change, then the marriage will change. And so then that's becomes convenient for the guy because then you can sit back and look at everything that you've done and build this story. I call it creating a monster that doesn't exist. Yes, that's exactly what it is, right? And you see, as a businessman, you can see this play out in the business world. And this is akin to um, a guy who has a failing business and blames everything. Oh, well, if, uh, if Biden wasn't in office, yep. my business would thrive. Oh, well, if... Uh, you know, the hurricane didn't come in or whatever it is. They blame the weather, politics. They'll blame everything else but take ownership themselves. Yes. Yeah. And what I always come back to with them, like, listen, absolutely, she has her stuff, yeah. right? There, there are going to be things. But for a woman, that is going to come from a different place than for a man, right? For men, we love challenge, yep. right? Mm -hmm. Like, we love the vision. We love to look forward. And it's always so interesting to me. They're like, well, honey, just just do the work and just step into the uncomfortable. And for her, she's got to have safety first. Yes. And so if she doesn't feel safe, she's going to stay stuck. Yep. Yeah. And for a lot of times, I think, and correct me if I'm wrong, 
a lot of men, because they're blaming their wives, their wives can obviously know that, they can pick up on that, they become more of a, a beta and she feels, okay, well, if he's going to blame me, criticize me, critique me, she's not feeling seen, yep. she's not feeling heard, certainly not feeling desired, the yep. three things that all women need. Yep. And like to your point, she's not feeling safe. So yep. she needs to take that on herself to provide safety for herself, probably emotionally mainly, yeah. but also likely she's looking at other things. Okay, do I need to add another income? Where am I gonna land? Yep. Women typically, they say, will plan a divorce or separation two years yep. in advance. And most of us guys are blindsided. Yeah. So now she's taken on even more of a masculine role and now you got two masculine energies competing against each other. Yeah, and most men don't know what to do with that, right? That, that's where the monster comes in, right? She's a bitch, she's no good, she yeah. she's, uh, doesn't see me for who I really am. And that's not true. She is very aware of how hard you work. She's very aware of what they are doing, but she just knows internally that isn't what I need. Yeah. And so she's sitting there hoping that he will figure it out because she doesn't want to have to tell him what she needs because then she is in the masculine and and that ends up starting a cycle of well i did this so and she's like well it didn't it didn't fit for me it didn't work for me and he's like well then it's your fault because i'm trying really hard yeah <laughs> yeah it, it, i laugh at it because one is i've been in that situation <laughs> right yeah, yeah where i blame i was like well if my wife changes then everything be good if she just opens her friggin' eyes up and yep. sees how amazing i am yep. then this will all work out yeah and it has nothing to do with that no and the biggest shift i see from men right at the at the reset this week is when the guy is able to go oh this is what i am doing Oh, this is what I am creating. It is on me, right? We talk about the men being the gardener and the woman is the is the rose, is the flower, right? Yeah. And yes, the flower has to bloom and to grow, but if the gardener isn't cultivating an environment in which it can or it's difficult for her to thrive, then as a gardener, you have to take responsibility for the soil, right? For for the nourishment then the rose is going to do what it does, right? Sometimes you do everything right and it still may not grow. But when a guy can see that, oh, yes, I've worked hard. Yes, I've, I've put in effort, but I didn't put the effort in the right place. I want to and I choose to put the effort in the right place. Then he can begin to shift. Then she will see something different. Um, for me, uh, a lot of men, this this comes from a place of blame, right? Well, she is saying this, right? Well, you're you're no good. You're a narcissist. You're you work too hard. And I always like to point out to men, well, well, there's a cycle going on here, right? She something has happened, right? You you stopped showing up, stopped desiring her, taking her on dates, smacking her on the butt when you walk by, giving her hugs, giving her kisses. And so she then receives that as I'm not worthy, yep. I'm not valuable, I'm not seen, I'm not loved, I'm not safe. And so then the story begins to play for her that I am not enough for this guy, I'm not valuable to him. So then that creates this place of unsafety and so she will either lash out or shut down. And so then the guy receives that and he's like, oh, well, she's doing this to me. Yep. When he realizes, oh, the process started with me. And so if I change, then you can change the circle, right? So now you show up differently. You begin to be different. She receives something different. It's not going to happen overnight. So it, you know, it's not, it's not that easy. She doesn't gonna, she's not going to trust it and lean into it first. But when you're consistently sending a different program, right, then eventually she's like, oh, I received something different. So then something different comes out of her mouth. Appreciation, love, sex, respect. He receives something different. And now you have a cycle that works. That's exactly right. And and it's not the guy's fault because almost all of us, in fact, I would say all of us, to be <laughs> fair, yeah. have been taught the wrong things. We, we've never been taught how to relate in a marriage and yeah. how to have the relationship. And that's why we have, it's not the activation program, it's the activation method. Yes. It's a methodology that these guys can take in and apply to their homes. Yeah. And the thing that's always interesting to me, Ryan, and this is what you know, you hear some of these guys at the Alpha Reset talking about, is the kids are watching. The kids are watching, the kids pick up on it, whether they, quote, see it or not. They feel the energy in the house, they feel all that. And that's when you see the guys who actually make a shift and say, look, okay, she's a bitch, whatever his story is about his wife, yep. and 
I'm going to lead. Yes. I'm going to be the man that leads my family. And if it doesn't work out, at least I did everything possible yes. to do it. And and guys, if you don't do it for your wife or yourself, but do it for the kids at do least. Do it for the kids. Yeah. And these are skills, this methodology that you can teach your sons and your daughters and you can use with them to better connect. And there's not one guy that's been through our program, Ryan, I know you know this, that hasn't wanted to be more connected with their children as their children become adults, Yes. right? Unfortunately, we get also the guys who have let it go too long. They've sat on the fence and not made a decision to make that change. And now they have grown adult kids who really don't want anything to do with them. Yeah. You know, they'll, they'll answer the phone, they'll send the birthday card, the obligatory birthday card, yep. but they haven't learned the skills to have a good relationship and it's applied to their wife and they've also had that same skills are applied to their kids. Yeah, it, it's kids are a great mirror yes. of how you are showing up, right? As a man, right? The, every single guy in, in the room this week, it's, you know, whatever story it was, like some guys had taken ownership right away. Some guys, it was still in the story of, of their wife needed to accept them for this new person that they'd become. But every guy was like, oh, and, and, and the kids though, they're, yeah. they're hurting. They're seeing it, right? We're fighting in front of them. I'm, I'm not as present. And I'm like, oh, so it's not just your wife. It's, it's your kids. Well, are they being a bitch? No. Oh, so you see their hurt differently. And so you're, you're interacting with your kids the same way you are with your wife. Right? How you do one thing is how you do everything. Yeah. And so then a lot of times that can be the light bulb, right? Of like, oh, well, if they're receiving me this way, maybe she's receiving me the same way. What's the commonality here, right? Yep. <laughs> yeah. yep. Everybody around me is a jerk. Wait a minute. Wait, <laughs> maybe it's me. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And a lot of us guys just need to be shaken up. I, I know they're, I'm speaking to an individual right now that's listening to this in their car or going for a walk who's been listening to the podcast because I get these emails. I haven't listened to the podcast for a year. It's amazing. Get off the fence. Yep. Right. And it doesn't have to be our program. Yep. But do something to lead your life and lead your family. Yes. That's I almost every conversation I have with a guy is I don't care if you join this program. If I think that it will do what it needs to do for you, I'm gonna tell you that and I'm gonna drive you in that direction. But get off your ass. Yeah. Right. Take ownership a hundred percent of your fifty percent. Right. And so being able to go to bed knowing when you put your head on the pillow that, man, I did everything. I know that I'm taking the right steps. I know that I'm consistent, which creates safety, right? I didn't do it one day and then stop doing it the next and then did it again the next day. I was consistent. If it was too late, it was too late. But, but man, I was in the game, right? Yep. We, we may have lost in overtime, but I never stopped playing. That's the key right there, right? You want to be, the MVP doesn't mean they're the most valuable player. It doesn't mean they're the best player. Yeah. Is there somebody usually in the teams that I played in, Ryan, they're, it's the guy that doesn't give up. Like yeah. no matter what, he is playing all out. Yeah. And they usually win because of that, that dogged nature. Yeah. Um, and when I think about this, you know, the key here, if I'm if you're one of the guys, I want to speak to one of the guys if I can. If you're sitting at home or wherever you are listening to this, driving your commute or wherever you choose to listen to the show or watching it on your TV, the key here really is what I would do is sit down with my wife. And if you guys aren't even on talking terms, just call the elephant out in the room. Yep. This is gonna be the hardest conversation you have, guys, to date. But say, look, babe, I know things aren't well between us. They're not where you wanna go, want them to be, they're not where I wanna be, but I'm going to do my my damnedest to work on this and work on myself to be a better man. Yeah. Odds are that's gonna be received very well. Yeah, because what you didn't do was put any onus on her. Correct. Right? It is on me to be better. Yeah, and it is. And it is. Right. Yeah. And, and for them, when, when a wife receives that, right, that's a different program, right? I, I am taking ownership. I'm going to do what I need to do in order to give her what she, what I think she needs, what I need for myself. And when I'm able to create that, then it gives me an opportunity, right? It, it gives me the best opportunity to win. So, yeah. Yeah. yeah I'm, I'm just getting excited here. Yeah. I'm trying, trying to jump in. I think the key thing you say here is you're doing it for yourself, right? Yeah. And, also, if you go back and listen to what I said, I never said sorry. Yeah. Right? I just called out the obvious. Our marriage isn't where you want it to be. And it's not where I want it to be. Yep. We're not happy. Yep. Right? And so I think that is a really key element that guys get to do yep. and then take action. Yes. Here's a question for you, Ryan. Uh, out of all the guys that say, hey, I, she's not doing the work, guys that come in and do a program like ours, and obviously we have the data on the programs that we do, 
Uh, we actually take anonymous surveys from every man that's yep. been through the program. Uh, and out of a five-star rating, I think we have a 4.94 yep. rating on the program. The guys get what they want. Out of the guys that come in, how many of the guys whose wives didn't do the work do the wives actually change? Oh, it is... it is. I know you're making up a stat. But yeah, it, it's... So I one of the things that I love about what I get to do is it's when a guy comes in, I get to have the opportunity to connect with them throughout their journey. Yeah. Right. Like we're checking in every week, every other week. Hey, how's it going? How's it going? And it's 80, 90% of the time week three, four, five, somewhere in there. You'll never guess what happened. <laughs> she just, it was like overnight. She just woke up and she was like, you're this man and I love it. And she, she kissed me this morning. She grabbed my hand and she said she was sorry. Mm -hmm. Right. For, I know you've been working hard. I've seen it. I know that you love this family. Um, I know that you love me. I know that. And I really appreciate you putting in the work. And he's like, I had no idea that she saw me. Yeah. But I had no idea that she was watching and that she was paying attention to me. It's like, yeah, you finally created safety for her to be able to say what scared her. Because for a woman, she's afraid to praise you. She's afraid to take ownership of her side because for her, she's already sitting at empty, right? So to take ownership and with a guy who is deactivated, who will take that and often throw it back in her face of, I told you, yeah, you know, well, if you would just go work on yourself, that sends her past empty into just dead zone, right? It's like a bank account, right? It's an emotional bank account in your relationship and the, the guy is trying to withdraw and it's already on overdraft, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. It's, I mean, I've been there, right? Yeah, like so I've, I. I've had to walk into to the bank and be like, listen, I, I have negative money right now. <laughs> How do we fix this? Yeah. That's scary, right? Yep. I don't know if I can get gas. And if I get gas, can I eat? Yep. And if I eat, can I pay rent? Yeah. Imagine that emotionally, mm -hmm. right? If I admit that I'm wrong and he doesn't receive it well, I'm going to die. Yeah. Right? If, if I give him praise and he takes it and throws it in my face... I'm going to be empty. And so for her, she's just in survival mode, yep. right? She, which is not who she wants to be. It's not her best version. And yet for her, it feels like the only choice. So when you fill that emotional bank account up and she feels safe, confident, right? Like I've gone from like, you know, like when you're broke and Friday comes and the paycheck hits the bank, mm -hmm. right? Party of the weekend, right? Like yeah. it's a time to go out. I'm, I'm full again. It's the same thing for her. You fill her up and the joy and the excitement and the fun comes back in because now she's got something to give back. Yeah. Uh, and there's two points I want to add to that. Um, you know, we have, we're right here at where we're filming this. If you guys are watching this, we're in our studio. Uh, if you guys are listening to this in, in the main house that we have, we run an event called the Alpha Reset. There's two other coaches there. And one of the coaches was on a call with a group of guys that are going through the program. And I jumped in so they could take a group picture. Um, with the guys and one of the guys said hey look my wife and I are separated we have space between us and he was clearly you know emotional and upset about it which yeah. is understandable and as we just were talking for the short dialogue you know he's only he's only started his second week in our program and he his wife can't even see him and he was talking about it. he's like how do I show her and then at, by the end of the conversation he, he already said she's already noticing changes right I go yes because your energy she can pick up your energy way before you're in way the room before. And she's seeing that you're putting in an effort. You're making changes. When your wife looks at you guys, when you say I do, and she's looking in your eyes, she is seeing your potential. Yes. She sees it clearly. And when I talk to the women, my wife coaching women, they will say all the time that it kills them inside to witness you not living your potential. Mm. Right? It just kills them inside. Mm. Um, and the worst thing that can happen by investing in yourself whether it be listening to this podcast, whether it be going through a program, whether it be going to a retreat, whatever it is, the worst thing that can happen is your stock will rise, yeah. right? And as an investor, I don't want to buy into stocks that I think are going down. It's a, that would be a moronic move. Right. <laughs> the best <laughs> yeah. way to lose your money. Your wife doesn't either. Yeah. She wants to invest in a stock. You, the man, her husband, the one she loves, she wants to invest in that stock that's rising. Yes. As you do. You want to invest in your wife when she's at her best and seeing her at her best. Yeah. And women will talk about this, guys. They'll talk about it when I have talked to them. They feel like, to use your rose analogy, like a flower that's wilting and dying. Yes. 
and just wait, looking for a breath of air, of sun, of water. Yes. And it's when it becomes too late, and the average I hear is about two years. Yeah. And this is why 70% of marriages that end in divorce are initiated by the woman. Yep. The guy always thinks it's a shocker, right? Yep. 90%, Ryan, 90%, that number goes up to 90% initiated by a woman if your wife has a college degree or higher. This is a stat, you can Google it. Yep. Blows my mind, and the guys are caught off guard. Yeah. This is why you got to be proactive. If you, if you have to be reactive, do it. Get in, make up some shifts, but be proactive as well and make the changes. Yeah, with, I would say, if not 100%, 90% of the men that I talked to this weekend, mm -hmm. it was, they had this version of their wives that hated their guts. Yeah. Right? And when they finally get the truth from them, their wives don't hate them, they're hurt. Yes. Right. I, man, I just, I miss the man I married. Right. I loved that guy. I see how good of a dad you are. It, it is sexy to me. It brings me joy, but I don't get that from you. Yes. And it breaks my heart. Yeah. Right. And they'll say, and so I shut down. I didn't know what else to do. And so I shut down and she'll own it. Right. I, I shouldn't have done that. I should have done something, but I didn't know what else to do. And so thank you for seeing me now right, for creating space for me, for making me feel seen and heard and valued. And when you do that, then she begins to see the guy that she hoped she married. And then she gets excited. And then she's pumped. And then she's willing to be vulnerable. And guys can hear the, the words they want to hear, right? I am in love with you. I am sorry. I do want you. We can make this work. And but you don't get there by waiting for her to take action. Hopium. Hopium. Hopium does not, it's not a drug you want, boys. No. Uh, and I've been there, man. Yeah. And early on, that's kind of how we, we've come to this, is I was hoping things would change. Sweep it under the rug. Yeah. Right? Mm, yeah. Stiff upper lip and all <laughs> yeah. that good stuff. It'll be better. I'll just go back to work. I'll, wait. I'll just wait for tomorrow. Yeah. I'll get up, go to, go to oh get out gosh. of the house, go to work, go to the gym, do my thing, come back, and she'll be in a better mood tomorrow. Oh, she's not. Okay. Yeah. I'm go to bed, repeat the cycle for yeah. weeks, months on end for a lot of guys, years. Yeah. And you get almost numb to it because it becomes your your new norm. Yeah. Something that that we can maybe dive into more another time is we deal with a lot of of farmers and accountants and construction workers, right? We have peak seasons and slow seasons. And oh well, I'm I, I know we're hurting, but I'm, I'm coming into my busy season, so I'm not going to have time. Yeah. <laughs> right. Well, you know, it's, it's, it's February now. So May things are going to slow down. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, are you ever going to have another busy season again? Oh, well, yeah. Every, every year. Okay. So you're telling me that you're, you're telling me, so I'm sure that your wife is feeling the same way that when the busy season comes in, the only thing that matters is work, that that is what's going to take your priority. Oh no, that's not what you, you just don't understand. I'm like, no, I, I understand completely. I know that you are busy, Yep. right? I get it. it. It's not to take away from that, but what is it? The, uh, show me your calendar and show me your bank account. And I'll show what's important to you. Right. Yeah. And if you're investing your money in your business and you're investing your time and that's what's in your calendar, that is where your priorities lie. And she feels that from you. No doubt about it. Yeah. I mean, so we'll, we'll sit down with a man coming through the program. So when I do like a one-on-one -on -one client, I'm working with them. Um, sometimes I'll say, All right, pull up your bank account. And the guy's like, what? No, do a screen share right now. Pull up your bank account. I want to see where you're spending your money. And luckily guys have the trust in me that they're willing to do that. And we have some deep conversations. Uh, every dollar is a vote. Where, what are you voting for right That's now? That's right. Are you voting for your business? Are you voting for your children? Are you voting for your wife? Are you yep. voting for your family? Well, you know, uh, usually it hits right away. They're like, yeah. oh, shit. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like, yeah. yeah. Where? Oh, where's your wife on your calendar? Let me see the meeting you have with your wife. Yeah. Doesn't exist. She knows that she's not your number one priority. Yeah. Right? Yet, then why should she make you her number one priority? Right. But she's not dumb. The, the thing that I, I know, Ryan, is the men that come through our program, they don't marry dumb women. Nope. They, do, they marry smart, <laughs> strong women women yes right because the men that come through our program are smart strong men yeah right and so they have somebody by their side 
And guys, you know, show me your bank account, show me your calendar, I'll show you your priorities. Yeah. Bottom line. Yep. Yeah. Pull up your Outlook calendar, your Google calendar, look on there right now. I will show you exactly what you prioritize. Yeah. You know, I, I when I talk with with a farmer or mm-hmm. a construction worker, right? I'm like, okay, so you you start planting in in February. You know it's not gonna grow until May. Well, why why not wait till May to plant? Yeah. Oh, well, it takes time to grow. Okay, cool. <laughs> so then you're telling me you plant in February and then you don't touch it till May, right? You're done at that point. Oh, well, no, I'm out there and and I'm and I'm I'm turning the soil and I'm fertilizing and I'm watering. And oh, so even though you can't see the result, you are consistent in showing up and doing the work every day because you know that that's the only way that you'll get there. Yeah. Do you take that same approach with your wife? Or do you expect I planted a seed, it should grow right now? Right? I I took you on a date, you should give me sex. Yeah. Right? I took care of the kids, you should give me respect. It's horse trading. It's horse trading. Yeah. And, and and she feels that. That's something that took me longer than it probably should have to buy into. Yeah. Right? That whole <laughs> yeah. like your energy enters the room before her. I'm like, ah, oh, sure, you know, whatever. whatever. <laughs> you know, it, it sounds great, all that woo-woo stuff. Yeah. Um, and <laughs> when when I realized it, when it hit me, right, it was, I made a conscious, I was like, you know what, like, I'm just consciously going to choose to walk in this house in the middle of the shit, right? Like, it wasn't magically better. It was, like, I knew what I needed to do, but it wasn't it wasn't working yet. Yeah. I was like, but I'm not going to come in with the energy of that guy. I'm going to come in believing that if I am planting seeds that, Two three months down the road, they are going to sow, right? They're gonna they're going to reap reap a harvest. And I walked in, and my wife literally spun around. She was like, "You're different, right?" I had not said a word, right? You're different. It's like, whoa! It's like I'm just really happy to see you. She's like, oh, I'm really happy to see you too. Boom! It was like, okay, I'm making a choice every day to go in and sow seeds of hope, right? Sow seeds of, I'm gonna be safe for you. Mm -hmm. I do not care if it doesn't turn into a big tree or a corn or whatever it is that I'm trying to grow. I just know that if I continue to plant seeds, I continue to fertilize and to water and nourish it, eventually there is no other possibility other than she's eventually someday, whether it's two weeks, two months, two years, she's going to flourish because it's inevitable, right? Farmers know, man, I plant and I, t- I just know, right? Like for me, if I were a farmer, it would be a terrifying three to six months, right? <laughs> yeah. Of just waiting, but they're just cool. They're like, no, I know that this works. Yep. And it's the same thing for these guys, like just consistently putting those seeds in the ground, right? Planting seeds for her, it's inevitable, but you have to be consistent. You have to be consistent. Um, and that's totally right. And, and the key to me is not only just the consistency is you got to plant that first seed. Mm-hmm. You can't be scared. And I've heard this said before. Um, I can't remember where I heard it, but uh, I, I think it was Alex Hermosi was talking. I was speaking at a, a lecture or something that someone sent me. And I really liked, he was talking about how he sold, he, he was doing fitness, w- w- helping people achieve their fitness goals. Yeah. And people would always say, ah, I'm just so busy. He said, are you ever going to be busy again? Well, yes. What a great time to start because if you can start getting the patterns in when you're busy, It'll be easy when you're not. There you go. And I think so many of us, everybody's friggin' busy. Yeah. I'm busy. You're busy. Yep. Colton's busy. He was filming this for, for yep. us. Everybody's busy. It's just, what are you going to prioritize in that day? You have 24 hours. I have 24 hours. Yeah. It's what we do at that time that really matters. Yes. Yeah. It's it's where you choose to put it. Yeah. Right? It's, it's, you can live in the story that I have no time. Yeah. Right? Which it serves you in some way. Right, it, it it allows you to buy into the excuse that I'm full up. There's nothing that I can do. It's out of my control. Yeah. Right. Um. Which which can be great. Yeah. Right. Because now you're perfect. Right. There's nothing you need to do. You don't need to shift. You know, you're full. And when I talk to guys, right, the busiest guys that we have, you know, 16, 18 hour days, I'm like, okay, are you ready for some hard truth? Like, yeah. Okay. So, so so let's just say that you have to. Those 16 to 18 hours, you're full on, you're eating lunch in your car or in the office because you don't have time. It's 24 hours in a day. Can you give one extra hour, 30 extra minutes to your wife, to investing into yourself? What if, what if I told you it took three hours a week? So yeah, you've got 
you're, you're spending 16 hours a day. What if you just take three hours a week that you're not investing now? Whether, what's your, what if it's your drive home, right? What if it is morning? What if you get up 15 minutes earlier every day? Yep. Are you willing to do that to make the change? Because there is time, even if you're the busiest person on the planet, it's the busiest season, you've never been busier. If it matters, you will create the time. 100%, man. 100%. There's, there's every guy I talk to, I mean, hands down, that's a hard worker as a business owner. When you sit down, you have a pint with them, you know, or whatever you're doing, and go, he's oh, working so hard and she doesn't get it. Why are you working hard? What's it for? Mm. What's well, for my family? Hmm. It's for your family that's breaking down. Yeah. Right? Because you're not stepping into leadership. Yeah. It's a hard pill to swallow. But I'm here, brother, to tell you, yes, it's not only do you look fat in the jeans. Yeah. It's not the jeans. <laughs> that's right. That's <laughs> you're going right. to look fat in anything you wear because you gained weight. Yep. And most guys don't have somebody to tell them the simple truth. Yeah. And that's one of the things I love about you is you, you're really, you, you go up to bat for these guys every time you get on a phone call with a guy, which has got to be hard for you because you know what's on the other side. Yeah. Right. And you're just, you're the guy reaching across the aisle, so to speak, and going, hey, life is better over here. All yeah. the pain, the loneliness, the, the 2 a.m. conversation about whether you should leave your marriage, stay in it, have an affair, not have an affair, all of the thoughts you've been having, you don't have to have those. You can be over here. It's a better life over yeah. here. Uh, but you got to do the work. Yeah. And the two things, Ryan, that I hear all the time, and I'm, I'm sure it's the same with you, um, I don't have enough time, which we just talked yeah. about. Nobody does, right? Everybody's busy. Um, and I don't have enough money, which is funny. I, a guy I'm working with one-on-one, -on -one, he's got $62 million liquid, and he's always complaining about not having enough money. Yep. You never have enough time. You never have enough money. It never changes, guys. It's yeah. not going to be better next year with that unless you change your mindset. Yeah. Take action now. Yeah. Yeah, it's exactly it. And again, you know, thinking of, again, construction workers, uh, even accountants, um, any anybody who owns a business, right? When I when I talk to them, like I just don't have any money. I'm like, okay, so what if I told you that uh, a bid for a project comes in? It's it's 1.5 million dollar project, right? You're you're doing 200 300 thousand dollar projects, and this guy comes in. He's like, listen, I will give it to you right now. I'm not taking any other bids. I've seen your work. I want you to do this, but you don't have the staff. You don't have the tools. You don't have the equipment that you need. But you know that if you invest into those things, that you're going to make more money than you've ever made. How quickly would you solve the money problem? Where would you go? What would you do? Oh, I'd go to the bank. I'd do this. I've got this friend. Yeah. Interesting. So you would do it for your business, but you won't do it for your wife. Yeah. And I've been there, man. So um, I get charged up as people can watch this and you do too, because yep. we've been on this other side, guys. We yep. know where you're sitting in yep. right now. And uh, I had blinders on. I couldn't see. I was yep. like, uh, no, I, couldn't, I don't have enough time to, to do a program. I, I don't have enough money to invest in myself. I'm putting into the business right now. We're scaling or, yeah. or whatever the story was. Kids in school or I'm doing all these things. You know, what's the cost of divorce? Yeah. What's, you know, you're losing 50% yeah. of everything, buddy. Yeah. Uh, that's going to cost you a lot. But more than that, that's a monetary cost. More than that. You know, what's the cost of, you know, you having to find your own house, your own furniture, yeah. your kids, you know, being raised by another guy, all of these other things. And I'm not sliding anybody that's in the situation, yeah. but these are harsh realities that we as men need to face. Yeah. Um, you know, and some guys they're on their third marriage and they're going, Hey, I wonder what's wrong. Oh, the third marriage isn't working out. Hmm. Could it be something I'm doing? Yeah. Yeah. And it's in, I want to make it clear, like this isn't about shame or guilt or no. any of that. You, you are, I, I tell almost every guy I talk to, there is that one guy that we have to have a really hard conversation <laughs> with. Um, but most men, like, this isn't a lack of effort. It's not a lack of desire or want to or commitment. I see your hard work and so does she. Yeah. It's just that it's not working, right? You're, you're, you're a train going down the tracks in the wrong direction and you are feverishly throwing coal on the fire trying to get that engine to go, yeah. right? Problem is every time you throw coal in, it just moves you faster in the wrong direction. So it's not your effort. We see you working hard. We know that you are legitimately busy. I know that you are legitimately burnt out. You're scared. You're hurting. You're angry. Maybe she had an affair. Maybe there was um, years of no sex. All of that is valid, right? And you have a choice. 
to either live in that, which sucks, right? I mean, how much longer do you want to live in that? Mm -hmm. Like I, I, I've been there, right? I, nope, I do not want to live in this. Yeah. <laughs> this sucks. Like at this point, I would rather get divorced than live in this another year to watch my kids suffer another year. So I get it. And if you just simply choose and it comes down to a choice, right? I, all the time, I'm like, listen, you've scaled the mountain, right? You, you've, you've clicked through everything. You've filled out all the, the paperwork. You've done, done the phone calls. You've done your research. You've put on the parachute. You've climbed the mountain. You're standing at the edge of the cliff. The last thing to do is to jump off. Yeah. All of the hard work up to this point has got you to this point. But at some point, you have to risk, right? Everything else that was done was safe because you can back out, you can say it's not for me. I, I tried, I looked, I researched. Men who get what they want take action. Oh yeah. Right, you've gotta jump off the cliff. And that's the scariest part because it's the last step that you take by yourself, mm -hmm. right? When you jump off the cliff, you realize that there's hundreds of men around you. They're like, hey, I got you. I've jumped off this cliff a bunch of times. I know exactly what to do. I've got you on the way down. But you have to take that last step alone but that's what action takers do you did it in your business right started a business alone yeah it, it, it it's just applying that same desire and belief in yourself that you are worthy of it that you can do it that's what that's what she's looking for that man that doesn't say hey honey if you give me permission if you're okay with it i'm gonna do this thing right whether that's our program or anything else it's no, I see where we're going and I know that it's leading to a train wreck. Mm -hmm. And so I am going to choose to get our train going in a different direction. And it's okay if you don't come with me right now. Yeah. Yeah. You know, what's in, yeah, it's also, I love that Ryan. I mean, that's guys rewind this and listen to that again, because that is beautiful. It really is. And what's so interesting is I know for me, Ryan, um, the powerful man didn't exist. Right. And there was nothing that I didn't, there were, there were a couple other like kind of men's coaching things that were around, uh, but I didn't feel like I needed to go to the beach and punch some guy or whatever else was <laughs> available yeah. at the time. It just didn't click for me. And one of the things I do think it's interesting is I remember my mentality a little bit was like, I should just know this. Mm. I shouldn't have to go get coaching or go through a program or what have you. And the thing that really got me is I started thinking about, at the time I had three companies. I thought, man, you know, uh, we had a problem with one of my companies with getting leads, yep. right? So what did I do? I signed up for a course on how to, get to learn to get lead generation <laughs> yep. and things like that. And my yep. team signed up. And you know what people say when you do that? Smart move. Right. You didn't know something or something wasn't working out. So you went and got education and assistance on how to do it better. Yeah. That is a smart business person right yeah. there. That's a guy I want to invest in because he's going to find a problem. There's a problem in the business and he's going to attack it. Yep. Why don't we do that with our personal lives? Yeah. We, we have been taught, right, you know, it, with counseling, self-help, all like it's as, as men, like th those are things that women do, like the men that aren't strong, they go and do those things. It's BS. Oh, it's the opposite. Right. It's a hundred percent the opposite. The, the, the man that's willing to say, you know, I don't know how to do this. And so rather than smashing into the bank of the river on the west side, then smashing into the, the bank on the east side and just going down the river like this, it's like, no. I want somebody in the boat with me that's gone down this river before. Yeah. Right. That they're going to teach me. You can learn how to do it, but it's painful. It takes a long time. And a lot of times the wife says, listen, I, I've got one life here. It's too late. I've given you 20 years. Yeah. I'm not going to give you another 10 to figure this out. Yeah. Yeah. It's, you know, something that's interesting that I think a lot of guys listening to this don't realize. We have 13 men uh, in the other building next to us right now that have gone through the activation method and now gone through the alpha reset. And these men are A players, Yep. right? They're A players, they're super successful in business now in their relationship, which was the missing element for a lot of them. Yep. Um, they're fit. And guys look at these men like they just said, how did they do it? How did they figure out how to make their business so successful? How did they figure out how, you know, how to have the relationship with their kids, that, you know, where the kids run to them when they come in the room? Yep. Like how do these guys just naturally do this? They worked at it. Yeah. And they work at they, they're just not publicly showcasing it, right? Yep. Behind the scenes, these men come to a course like the activation method to learn the methodologies and then they apply it. Yeah. And they get the results. Yep. It's really not rocket science. It's just we don't see it forward facing. Yes. So you just see these men in the distance like, 
I want what they have. Yeah. I just don't know how to get it. Yeah. And these men just took massive action. Yes. Yeah. They, they realize the truth, right? That, that as a business owner, I am applauded for getting help. Yeah. For, for having someone teach me. And so it just makes sense that that's what I should do in the other parts of my life with health, right? Just can't, just can't seem to get gains in the gym. Oh, I hire a personal trainer. Exactly. Right. Oh, I, I can't, I can't figure this thing out. I, I, but with relationships, because it's so vulnerable and men, we're not supposed to be vulnerable. Yeah. Right. We're not supposed to show emotion. We're supposed to know exactly what yeah. to do. We allow the shame around it to keep us stuck. Right. That's the number one thing, whether a guy gets mad at me on the phone, whether the guy starts crying or he shuts down or he hangs up on me or whatever it is, it's the shame of, I don't know how to figure this out and, I, and I've lost hope and the ability because if I can't figure this out on my own, it must just be me or it must just be her. And when they accept the truth that these men accepted is like, oh, there was no class in high school on relationship one-on-one. There was no college course on marriage. It was, you're married, here's the keys. Here's the keys to your new house. We're not gonna teach you how to build it. We're not gonna supply you with the tools or the equipment or the support. You and your wife go figure out how to build your life together on your own. Yeah. And, and when they're like, oh, that doesn't make sense. Like, would you ever build a house without <laughs> having a foreman, without, without having someone there? No. no, not at all, man. This reminds me, Ryan, um, so I suck at golfing. I'm like the guy <laughs> that does like the bachelor party golfing back in the day. Um, and recently, I went golfing a couple times with a group of guys. I moved to a new area in 2020, and I went golfing with them. And then they're all better than me, but you know, yeah, but yeah. but marginally better than me, right? And they golf a lot. They yeah. golf regularly. And there's one guy who's really freaking good. And I remember pulling him aside. And again, I've only gone a couple times, and you know, asking him, and I go, hey, hey, you know, his name was Dave. Hey, Dave. You know, you know, how long have you been golfing? We doing? He's like, oh, these guys and us, we've been going out for like five years. We go out all the time. I go, yeah, but you're like really, really, really good. And they're like yeah. a little better than <laughs> yeah. me. And they've been doing this for five years. Yeah. He's like, Doug, I take lessons. He's like, all good golfers take lessons. Every single one. Tiger Woods hired his, told his golf uh, coach, I want to redo my swing. Yep. Right. And yep. that's because he's a pro. Yep. And what you don't realize is these other guys that are out there that want to be good, but for some reason there's a stigma about doing golf lessons. Golf ain't cheap. Yep. Golf ain't cheap. Yep. <laughs> you know, yep. uh, it's not one of those things. So this other guy, Dave, who has invested himself, he goes out there and he has like he's the best guy out there. He has a great time. Yep. You know, but he also invests in getting lessons and getting help. And that's just logical. Yes. It just makes sense. Yeah. And other people, all they get is the benefit of him being a better golfer. It, it's, it's fun to play with him. You love to see the the big shots. You love, you know, I'm sure he's giving little pointers here and there. Yeah, sure. And and it's not, it's because of the work he put in, but it's also because he had someone a little wiser, a little smarter say, hey, I know this doesn't make sense. And that's probably my most favorite thing with these guys, right? Like, wait, I'm supposed to do what? Yeah. Well, that doesn't make sense. Well, of course it doesn't. What makes sense to you doesn't work. Yeah, right? exactly. Like, I, I golf too. I am, I've got this awesome hook. So yeah. like if I was playing the next hole over, the whole, it'd be great. Um, and and I had a friend that was good. And I'm like, man, like I just, I, I keep hooking. I keep hooking. And, and the more I try to break my wrist over, the more it hooks. He's like, oh, he's like, well, you've got to actually open up your stance a little bit. I'm like, well, that doesn't make sense. He's like, but that's what you need to do. Yeah. Like just do it this way. And because he was, good at golf i simply took that advice and all of a sudden <gasps> go straight yeah right and now oh well of course you open your stand this is of course what you do yeah right but it wasn't until i was vulnerable enough to ask for help to lean into what was uncomfortable right like i thought i looked ridiculous right like yeah. i'm out there and i got my my foot cocked to the left a little bit and i kind of got my butt cheeks just like sewed up real <laughs> tight and he's like you know, i'm like i feel like I look ridiculous, but you know what doesn't look ridiculous is when the the ball goes straight down the fairway. It's exactly what it is. You looked ridiculous when you're hooking it all the time, right? Yeah. And these guys that have gone out for five years, all they do is bitch and complain, and they're mad, and they're you know chasing their balls, but <laughs> yep. they don't realize. At least it was obvious to me in these two times. That's why I asked Dave. They don't realize that all that frustration and all you know they're going out there and playing, but they're not even enjoying themselves all the yep. time. 
because they're not performing. Yeah. And it's really as simple as just getting some help and, and men get to do this in their relationship as well. Yeah. Ryan, man, it's thank you so much. The amount of men that you have literally saved, saved their lives, saved the lives of their family. I know we did a big meeting with the TPM movement, people like you and myself and Colton and everybody else. And, and Tim uh, did an excellent presentation where he gathered all our stats. So guys, if you don't know, we keep stats and statistics on all the men that come through the program. And the men do an anonymous rating of the coaches, the program, and what have you. And we have, a four, I think, again, again, it's a 4.9 something out of five for the program. Yep. The men say, hey, I got what I came for, which yep. is unheard of. But the other stat, Ryan, that really touches me is we estimate a thousand children have had yeah. a father who's more present, a yeah. father who shows up. Now the marriage may or may not have worked, you know, that's a different story, but they have a father that's gonna be there for them, a man who knows himself better, who is leading from the front. Yeah. That is a thousand lives that you, my friend, directly impacted, a thousand kids, so thank you. It's my pleasure. I love the work that I get to do. It is the fuel in my tank when I hear those stories. Yeah. Right. Of you'll never guess what my daughter said. You'll never guess what my wife said. It's it's everything to me. Yeah, I know it is. Gentlemen, as we always say in the moment of insight, take massive action. And if you are on that cliff looking to take a jump, or you just want to know more about the activation method, a program that's literally helped thousands of businessmen just like you. Uh, Ryan is one of the guys that you might talk to. He is one of our senior advisors. He is a great guy to get on a phone call with. And if anything, I can guarantee two things. If you get on a call with Ryan, you are going to leave with an insight that you did not know. So you will leave a better man from that conversation. It's no obligation for the conversation. You will leave a better man. Two is you will have the opportunity of meeting and talking to one of the greatest men that I have ever met in my life, which is Ryan. So guys, take some action. If you want to get in, go over to thepowerfulman.com. If you want to reach out to Mr. Peach himself, just email VIP at thepowerfulman.com and say, I want to talk to Ryan. His nickname is Deadpool. That'll give you something to talk to him, how he got that nickname. Uh, but he is the man, the myth, the legend. And gentlemen, for you, it's time to invest in yourself. It's time to raise your bar. Uh, don't be like the guy <laughs> hooking the ball at the golf course. Figure it out. You do it in business. In times of need, you figure it out. This is your chance, and I'm calling you out lovingly. This is your time to figure out whatever it is for you. Until next time, we'll see you on the TPM show.